does the astral plane look like? Is it like our 3D world when we are out in the astral plane walking around as a spirit being? Does everything look exactly the same as the 3D world looks when we're walking around in the flesh? Or do things look different? Does your apartment look different? Does your house look different? Does it look different outside? Well, in this part three of the series, I'm going to give you my own point of view, my own perspective of what the astral plane looks like, and perhaps some things that you might expect when you go out there. But I also want to tell you this, and I I 100% believe this. I think that people will see the astral plane in different ways, depending on their point of view. You see, the astral plane is really, truly made up of thought. And when we're out there, our minds, which are there, perhaps they're not as conscious as they normally are when we're awake, but our conscious minds are aware when we're in the astral plane. Those conscious minds, they're doing what they have to do to make sense of another universe and of things that truly, when we see them or perceive them, we may not understand. So, Each person's mind may do things differently. Uh, Everybody is more than likely going to have a different filter on this. But perhaps there will be similarities. I suppose that you'll just have to see when you get out there. But today, with this part in the series, I want to talk about kind of the look of the astral plane and the mode of transportation that you can use. Of course, here and there, I'll be providing examples for you of things that I've seen and things that I've done. First of all, when I've left my body, things don't look um, anything like they look in the physical world. I have gone out years ago. I remember I would, I would go out and, um, when I would be looking around, sometimes I would perceive that things have been multiplied. Let me explain that. Okay. So let's say I was looking from the patio of my apartment, which I've done Previously, I've looked out in my patio when I've been out of my body. And let's say I could see sort of the apartment, the rest of the apartment building, and even maybe the top half of the apartment building if I rose upward. When I look, it appears that the roof just goes on and on and on and on as if it's repeated into infinity i've never seen anything like that also when i've been in an an apartment or been in my room everything seems to be much more expansive also in regards to seeing my own body and this is another subject that comes up frequently with people that have asked about astral projection I have to tell you that, to be honest, I have very rarely perceived my own body or even taking it, taking it in. And I'm not sure why that is. Let me take a moment to talk about seeing other spirit beings. If you are in your apartment or your house and you are astral projecting now, that hasn't happened to me much when I've been, say, in my apartment or been in my own space. I have had a few memorable occasions when it happened. 
it happened really, really early on when I was maybe 12 or 13 years old. I had started rising out of my body, but I had stopped. I didn't go all the way. And I looked and I saw, and by the way, this is a story that I told in another episode, but I thought I would tell it um, again right now. This was a moment where I looked and I saw from one of the walls in my room, a man emerged from one of those walls, just went right through it, walked, and then passed through another wall. And during that time, this man didn't look at me, didn't pay attention to me, completely ignored me. And I have to say, since it was the first time I had ever seen another spirit being in the astral plane, it freaked me out a little bit. I got over it. I did. I got over it, but it did freak me out. So there is a chance that you will see other spirit beings in your space, but it really is going to going to depend on what you're comfortable with. And that kind of goes back to what I've talked about before, where this thing is in your control. You are in control of your experience. And if there is a thought in your mind that you really don't want to see other spirit beings in your space where you are, you probably won't see them. You're probably not going to. That's just the way it is. Now, just because you don't see them in the astral plane when you're astral projecting doesn't mean that they're not there. So let me talk also as I'm getting into this about being out there. So you're in another universe, you're hanging out, you know, as, as a spirit being. And one of the things that I, I have talked about in the past is your ability to move in the astral plane. What are the best choices um, in doing this? Again, I can only share with you what my experiences have been. You know, for me, I always talk about flying versus traveling through the power of thought. One of my first episodes, actually the first episode I ever did on this channel was traveling with the power of thought. And it is my preferred way to travel in regards to things being efficient. Now, in regards to me just having a good time and and things being pleasurable, I love flying. Flying is amazing. It is just amazing to get out there and to soar in the sky and to see the world from a different perspective. It, it just, it's, it's indescribable. And it, it by the way, it, it, it's nothing like flying in an airplane or a helicopter. Or, um, there's a certain sense of freedom that you have when you fly without a machine that is, as I say, it is indescribable. But in practical terms, and this is something that I think I have actually discussed before as well, what I would like you to do if you think it would be actually uh, more efficient to fly, um, to find a place or to go someplace, let's say you focus and you want to go to a specific place, Ask yourself, how many times have you been in an airplane, looked down and known where you are? Not much, not unless you're the pilot and you're actually navigating. We don't normally see the world from that perspective. We normally see the world from being on the ground. So this can be a very difficult way to travel. Extremely difficult, actually. So you might not want to travel this way as opposed to thought and traveling with the power of thought simply means thinking about something, thinking about where you want to be, whether it is in, I don't know, in uh, Europe or in Asia or in Africa or another world or whatever. That's a bit simpler, though, when we travel with the power of thought, and I should just say in my experience of traveling with the power of thought, if other thoughts come in while you're focused, 
then you can end up someplace else. And that's happened to me before as well. You have to first kind of discipline your mind to think and focus on a place you want to be. Focus on that place. That is the only thing that exists. And then go there. If you can do that, then it is an amazing mode of travel and it is a much more efficient way to travel. Anyway, Let me cut off part three here. I'm going to get into part four and continue this. There's more I want to talk about with flight versus the power of thought and getting places and some of the places that I've been in the astral plane that have been very, very interesting to me. I will continue to talk about the different worlds and the different looks, that sort of thing, and continue to give you suggestions on what I think is going to make your experience much more interesting and fulfilling. For now, thank you so much for coming on another journey with me. And until next time, take care.